would like to welcome you to the Will County Land Use and Development Committee. Uh, we're going to get started by having uh, Commissioner Ventura and the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, this is a view looking at the property, uh, basically looking west 
from Weber Road. So the applicant operates Siegel's Cottonwood Farm on the subject property. It's an entertainment use on the parcel, but also on the properties to the south, which are actually located within the city of Crest Hill. The banquet barn um, is located toward the rear there. The mouse cursor is on it. So that is the banquet facility or the barn facility for the use. And it's called the barn at Cottonwood. The applicant has applied for a commercial build-out permit for the structure and also a site development permit, which would um, provide the parking for the use if there is landscaping being installed and things of that nature as well. Staff did not receive any objections to these special use permit requests. Staff did recommend approval of both of these special use permit requests. Um, staff recommended six conditions for the rural events special use permit, and I will kind of run through those for you here. So the first condition is just our standard that allows us the um, you know, right of entry to do an inspection. The second condition says that within six months of county board approval, the applicant shall apply for permits for all structures located on the subject parcel constructed without building permits. On the property, the only structure that was constructed with a building permit is the banquet hall, this banquet barn. Um, all of the other structures that are part of this entertainment use or the agricultural use were constructed without permits. However, they are part of the special use area. So there's a five acre area dedicated to the use that encompasses it. So they could be used as part of this rural events use and we are requiring building permits for them. Condition number three, the applicant shall comply with all requirements of the health department. Condition four, the applicant shall comply with all requirements of the Lockport Fire Protection District. Condition number five, outdoor entertainment such as live music shall only be permitted in conjunction with the principal rule events use. No other uses outside of the rule events use or other permitted uses in the A1 zoning district are allowed. This is basically a safeguard against having something like a concert, which would otherwise not be permitted on the property. And condition number six, the applicant shall comply with all applicable county codes and ordinances, including but not limited to outdoor lighting provisions, and then also the public nuisances noise ordinance. So that's just reinforcing um, codes and ordinances that are already on the books. Staff also recommended approval of the special use permit for the ancillary liquor service in conjunction with this use, which would permit you know, attendees at these wedding venues to have you know, beer and wine, for example, at the wedding. Um, this first condition is, again, just our standard condition. The second condition is that the applicant must receive and retain a liquor license in accordance with the alcoholic beverages section of the Will County's Code, also referred to as the Liquor Control Ordinance. And then condition number three, again, which is mirroring a condition on the previous special use, within six months of county board approval, the applicant shall apply for permits for all structures located on the subject parcel constructed without building permits. For that special use permit request, it applies to the full parcel, so those full 31.51 acres. Uh, the applicant is requesting that so that if attendees at the wedding go on a hayride, for example, and they're out in the back of the property, they could take you know, a glass of beer with them on the hayride. Um, so again, other structures could be used as part of the rural events, which is why we're requiring those building permits. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended unanimous approval all of these two special use permit requests with the staff recommended conditions, we did have two commission members uh, recuse themselves from voting. And there were no objectors present at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting either. I guess you have one, one question at the first. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of this, but I did want to ask, how is it that this place has been operating as a public business, as far as I know, because I drive by it all the time, all this time, and didn't have any building permits? Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's a lot of buildings on that property. I mean, the majority of the operations are actually located. Uh, Justin, we can go to the zoning map, please. Mm -hmm. Are actually within the city of Crest Hill. Ah. So if you see here, the parcel we're looking at is sort of this odd-shaped, flag-shaped lot. 
and the majority of the operations where you enter, where you exit, uh, where you purchase your tickets, for example, that's all within the city of Crest Hill. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, now I just had a question about uh, on the uh, on the thing it says that Will County Sheriff and the Will County managers go out to do inspections. Is that how they normally do it? That's how we normally phrase that, just in case there's some sort of situation where uh, land use staff may need like a, a sheriff deputy escort or something along those okay, lines. I just yeah. wanted to clarify because I was getting the impression I got was that you, you go out there with the sheriff every time and think that's a waste of money. But yeah, what you're saying is fine. Yeah, very rarely used. It was just uh, verbiage that was developed in the state's attorney's office. Okay, thank you. That was a, out of order on the motion earlier, but you have the staff report first, so the motion and the second. Um, uh, I, I, uh, excuse me. I do want to, uh, Dan McGrath, Assistant State's Attorney, I just want to let uh, the committee know that this um, venue has been the subject of litigation. It's currently, um, a court, there is a court case now, there's a preliminary injunction prohibiting this use. The whole point the whole point of that was that the proper permits and uh, other authorizations by the county board had not been given so consequently the state's attorney is not recommending that the board not go forward in fact quite the opposite we just want uh, our position has always been in the, in the court case is that all we wanted the seagulls to do was to uh, file the appropriate permits and go through the appropriate process which they're doing but i want to make sure the committee is aware of that um right now the the case uh i think believe the next court date is january 24th so once this gets approved uh that uh that court case will uh, become resolved essentially based on board approval of uh if that's in fact what happens so i just i just I, i'm letting the, the committee know so you so you don't later find out about it and wonder why i didn't say anything We do have one speaker signed up to speak on this case, Paul Siegel. You're here just for questions or I just you don't, if, if I was going to speak, you to sign up. Uh, I don't know that you, if you have any questions for me, um, I would, so I don't know if I need to come down and say that or what, what the committee's desire is. Mm -hmm. Any questions? <coughs> Well, the question I was going to ask before Dan spoke was um, when they when someone doesn't file the permits beforehand, what is the like what happens? What is the, I mean, how, they always end up in litigation or are there fines? I can. It's Is that directed towards the state's attorney's office? Or? Whoever wants to answer that. <laughs> uh, well. From our office's point of view, once we are made aware uh, of, of an issue, that is somebody has filed a complaint, uh, which they would uh, typically most often uh, do through land use, then we would take appropriate action depending on what the situation is. It may just be an ordinance violation case, or it may be something like this that would require um, uh, going into court and asking for a preliminary injunction. So the facts would, would greatly depend. Sometimes there would be no litigation at all. It would be a matter of the need to comply and the, the person or persons say, I didn't know it, and then they go ahead and comply. We're not looking to file lawsuits against people. We just want the ordinances to, com uh, to be complied with, that's all. Do you have any objectors? So we have a vote on the two special use permits, 022 Memorial Events. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Jim? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to, uh, we have, uh, uh, well, actually more than one case today about uh, uh, liquor, uh, special use for use of liquor. And, you know, the, the here's what I want to make clear. There are no liquor licenses available. And my concern is, is, is that, is that when we pass 
or give us such a use for liquor uh, use on a piece of property, because it's on the property, it's not for the business, it's on the property, that, that we are basically indicating that we, we are going to issue a uh, liquor license. And my, uh, and my guess is, if I ask the applicants, they're, they're, they're in, uh, anticipating, and their expectations are that this county will increase the number of liquor licenses to give them use of liquor, which, which is not the case. And I'm concerned that it creates certain liabilities for the county in the courts, perhaps, or puts us in a tough position if it's taken to court, because we've issued them a special use for liquor use, but we won't give them a license. Now, we've talked, and I've talked to the state's attorney's office, uh, kind of in general, this, you know, and we've talked about this at committee, that we need some type of process to, expect, to, to uh, increase the number of licenses, liquor licenses that are available. And whether we want to look at categories of liquor licenses, and uh, you know, uh, there's certain amounts for for this or certain <coughs> amounts for that, you know. So there's work to be done. But my other concern is, and I'm gonna, you know, kind of ask the state's attorney's office their view on this, is that we have no process in place currently to increase liquor licenses. And, and that in the absence of, of, of a, a process, I'm also concerned that, that this would be arbitrary and capricious of who we, when we issue additional liquor licenses, which should not be the case. You know, I mean, I look at this also, uh, I'm no lawyer, but I do look at, uh, I've been involved in enough lawsuits around in here that you do realize that you, you have to have things in place to limit the liability that the county might have in any particular instance. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I asked Mary to come in only because I've talked to Mary about this in, in the past and, and you know, kind of asked her view of do you think we need a process in place? And I'm going to ask Mary to speak in a second, but my thought is, is that do we have a process in place? No special uses for liquor on property should go forward. Applicants will make the argument, this has nothing to do with a license. This has to do with they have no right to have liquor through a zoning process. But I, I, I disagree. It has everything to do with how we do forward a license. I don't know, if Mary, if you can make a comment on this, and you talked about this in the past. Or if that, we, you know, what we've talked about, by the way, we've talked about it should be maybe a dual process. Is that the, is that the special use and, and a uh, additional liquor license can go on, on parallel paths. So it's understood that there's, there's two paths here. Should they be parallel? Should they be separate? So I have some concerns about uh, also putting the county up with certain liabilities and, and also our, that we do not have a process in place. I would recommend we put all these special use for liquor on hold uh, while we develop a process. So I see Mary's talking to staff over here. But, yeah, because, you know, because, you know there was a, a process put into place by the previous Montgomery staff. Can't hear you. Um, and, 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 and Brian and Turn the mic can on. join in. Who's this today? Just anywhere. anywhere else. Else. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So there was a there was a process I guess put in place. The, the plan had been, and I wasn't sure if it had been put into place, was that the application or the the um, ordinance to amend the liquor license ordinance would go forward at the same time as the request for the special use permit. That way, it would be clear to the owner that they were or were not going, they would, would or would not be a liquor license available at the time the special use permit was granted or denied. Um, so 
the question that I was asking to Brian and David was, A, you know, did that get put in place? And they affirmed it did. But what should be happening is that there should be an ordinance also on the county board agenda to increase the number of licenses because there's not one currently available. So that's what needs to be happening right now. And I don't know that it has. Jen, Jenny? Um, so a couple things. One, um, I'm thinking maybe we should table the variance. Can I hear you? Can I hear you? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, go. that's him. I, I had my little light on. All right. <laughs> um, my first thought is maybe we should just table the variance for the liquor license for this meeting since we don't have the other. But my real question is, I did, I've been a part of some of these votes where we take away a license, we add a license, or we move things around. I just didn't realize we didn't have an official process, and that just kind of blows me away because we have a liquor commissioner. It seems to me we should have a process. Yeah, that's what Mary basically is start with the commissioner. Yeah, I, I indicated we do need to, you know, probably sit down with the liquor commissioner and talk about what parameters are looked at in deciding whether or not a liquor license is granted or whether we just give them if there's one available. I don't know. And so, Mary, would it be appropriate to table this part of their request or not? That's, that's it, you know, up to the okay. committee, but you certainly can. Yeah. Uh, Bert Gordon's first. I, I have a couple questions. Um, how many special use permits for liquor license licenses have you issued that have not been able to acquire a license? And do you have some type of a wait list established? So, you know, if somebody received the uh, special use permit six months ago and don't have it yet, but then somebody, you know, uh, today we um, issued this one today, how are you <coughs> monitoring that? That's part of the uh, concern. We've, we've issued no additional liquor licenses since we uh, since there's been none available. So, so there, there's been no special use for, for liquor since there's been no uh, licenses available. So the answer is this: these are the first, right? And, and, uh, Secondly, when you ask how many we issue or how many are out there, I think there's a bigger question because there's just some different classifications, you know. Uh, uh, so, you know, my district, you know, I've got I've got licenses and uh, half a dozen licenses for bars within probably two blocks. You know, I, I so there's these, you know. And I've talked with my 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 mate, uh, my county board mate, uh, Amanda, Amanda Cook, about this, and, and she's been extremely helpful about talking about concentrations of, of licenses, which I think is another issue that we need to talk about as part of the process of when there may be one available. You know, if there's already ten on the same block, do you need eleven? I mean, so uh, so so I think there's another. Uh, uh, issues that we could incorporate in how we evaluate issuing an additional liquor licenses. It's just not all numbers. And, you know, so, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if you'd agree with that. There's a number of issues that we would probably have to resolve. On the licensing part, that, that's the special use part. Support David first to see. Thank you. I just hope we can provide a little clarity um, to the process. The department did meet with the point chief of staff and with also um, with the executive's office and to formulate how we would run the zoning and the liquor number issue concurrently. And with our department internally, with the land use department, what we started doing is if anybody wanted to um, obtain the zoning for liquor, we would have a pre-application meeting in which we would invite all interested parties from the county, including the district reps, to come in. And we would advise the person who was interested of the process of going forward with both concurrently. And the purpose of that meeting, too, was also to give 
potential applicant, um, an idea of how receptive at least the district representatives were and the likelihood as to whether or not that would be an acceptable request or not for them to make a business decision as to whether or not they wanted to file for the zoning and then go concurrently with um, the recommended permit process. Okay, fast forward to these two particular um, permits. Um, that was the way that we've been processing both of these as well, um, uh, the sequels as well as the Kendricks. Um, now, as unfortunate as it might be, you know, with the election we just had and changes of staff and things, um, you know, we have the zoning right to go for, but you know, the, the liquor permit side of the board, you know, may not have had the public hearing posted yet or things of that nature. So we have had a process and we have been going through it for at least the past year um, with the liquor permits. And these are actually just the first two that the board has now seen that have gone through this process. So but if I may though, David we have talked, you know, we talked to land use and you, and, and you did mention. I can hear you. So you can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So we did talk about that. And you talked about, you know, we'll work on this process. But the, pro but the process was never brought, brought back to the county board. It was never discussed whether we, we like the process or we approve the process. Because ultimately, is a county board decision on the process of, 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 of uh, uh, whether they, they will change the ordinance to have a liquor license. So I, I want to say, even though there were discussions, there was no formal approval of a process by the board. Steve? I'm not saying you didn't. I know you had to work on a process. You know what I'm saying. You know, when we, uh, when we took away the liquor licenses, I think that was about two years ago or three years ago. <coughs> that would probably started about two years ago. Yeah. And what, whatever it was, you know, I was fine with taking away the liquor licenses and in the process of getting one, because I would never be in favor of eliminating them. So the process that I was told and the rest of the board was, we voted on it, the full county board, to remove the liquor licenses. So if somebody wanted one, a new one comes in, okay, then the process was to go through a variance to get it. That's what we were told. The process was to get a variance, and then if you didn't get the if you got the variance, that didn't mean you got the liquor license. That was a whole other step. So you would have to spend the money to go to the variance, and if you if you didn't if you got the variance, it did not mean you'd get the liquor license. That was the second part. So now all of a sudden I'm hearing something different and I'm just saying that that's what we did because I would never vote to eliminate liquor licenses totally. In some districts, people don't want them. But some places, you don't have a lot. I, I get it, in, in Frankfort Township, there's too many, maybe, all right? But where I live, like on uh, Archer, where my district, there's places that are gonna be coming up that are gonna want a liquor license. So they've asked me already, and I said you got to go through a variance process, and if you get the variance, then you can go for a liquor license, but you may not get the license just because you got the variance. And that was the rule. And now, you know, I, I look at this wedding barn, you know, if the guy's going to put a wedding barn up and not have liquor, how's he going to have a wedding barn? So you're, it, it's like saying no to the business. So, you know, I'm just going to leave it with that. Right, so, in the essence of moving things forward, is it possible for us to separate the S18022 special permit rural events for today? That way, if they can come in compliance before their court date, um, and then get those permits filed, and then table the liquor license so that if we, when we vote on that, we are voting with the ordinance for increasing you know, because that's not been added to our agenda. So then that would go or with along with that portion, which is S-18-023. Uh, you, you can separate the issues out. I believe that brings them into compliance with the court case. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd, have to, I'd, have to, I'd have to talk to Brian to see 
exactly what was left, but I believe it would, if it doesn't bring them in compliance, it would bring them very close to compliance. But the, the liquor license, whether or not that exists, it has no relevance to the court case. Okay, so we, but we're allowed to separate that for today and vote on one in table as, as a separate part of it? Yes. Okay. So do I make that motion? Yeah, I was going to say, do we want to amend the issue in front of us, or because we already have a first and second, or do we want to do it separate? I don't know. Uh, thank you. I didn't have that question. Yeah, I just wanted to mention when people are talking or <clears throat> asking the question, is there a liquor license available? What we passed was that if somebody gives up their liquor license, that liquor license goes completely away. It doesn't stay there so that if somebody petitions to get them, it goes completely away. That's why the process of we have to come back and decide if we want to add back to the total. Okay. I I hesitate to wade into these waters, but um, Jim Harvey, who handles a lot of these directly for the county executive, is not here to speak. So I just want to, I guess more for the new members, in my understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, this, but in the past we had excess licenses, and the board chose to get rid of excess licenses, because if we had excess licenses and people qualified, they were eligible for those licenses. But much like municipalities, we have zero licenses available on a daily basis. The only way to get additional licenses is to go through the process and for the board to increase the license to accommodate that. And I guess my understanding, and I've not been directly involved in this, that there was a process that was worked out with the county board staff and the county executive's office. And it was in the spirit of, as has already been mentioned, I think giving business owners or entrepreneurs who are gonna spend the money a realistic expectation, hence the meeting with the board reps, the executive's office, who handles the liquor licenses, and board staff probably, and landing staff, so that they understood the process basically as it looked at the beginning. So before they started spending money and in investing in the project, they knew what the, the odds were. It's still a risk because the board can uh, shoot it down, but this is driven by the board now. This is. The board has to approve the, the special use permits. The board has to approve increasing the licenses. The county executive now can't do, I mean, even before it was driven by the policies, but now we have to rely on the approval of the, the special use and the liquor license. So if we need to formalize that and bring that back to a vote, I think we should, because I think it's a good process for somebody coming in looking to spend the money and do the process, they get an idea. And I know that's happened with some of these <laughs> districts where the reps say we have a, an issue with more liquor licenses. The other thing, just in my experience too, has been we only control liquor license not incorporated. Right next door, maybe a municipality who has six, and I think that's the issue in Frankfort Township, is there's a combination of unincorporated and incorporated. It does, the residents don't know the difference. They just see 12 liquor establishments right. in a row, and they don't like it. So we have to, we only, we only control the unincorporated. So, but I'm not sure. I mean, there is a process. If it needs to be more formalized and approved by the county board, let's like do it so everybody knows what the rules we're playing for. But it seemed to be a good process to bring people in early, tell them what the outlook looked like before they spend a lot of money and time and committee time to only get the end and get shut down. So. If, if there's something else we can do, please let us know. We'll help. Okay. David and Judy. Um, the property owner wanted to speak. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I just want to just be clear with the, uh, the committee is that, I mean, the department did work to try to key up both of these matters for the board for both of these cases, both the special use and the liquor. But our department only can have influence on the process for the zoning side. And we were trying to coordinate both concurrently. Again, as was planned out with the prior chief of staff. And again, it's not again, it's not necessarily something that's codified as a unified process, but the process that have been followed for both the zoning and the liquor are following the currently adopted board ordinances for both of those matters. Judy? Yeah, I was just wondering then, um, I don't know if those meetings were held and if the county reps were included in those meetings. I don't, I'm not in that district, so I wasn't sure if that meeting was held. And then, of course, the situation here is this this property 
uh, was out of compliance for a lot of reasons, hence the state's attorney's case, right? So the, what's happening now is he's trying to bring himself in compliance with everything that he wishes to do on the property. So I'm not sure, it's not like he invested, before he invests money, you know, like what Nick was saying, before he invests money into this venture, he's already done that. He's already invested all his money in this property has been running as it has. He came last month and got the board to get agritourism permits so that he could operate his uh, pumpkin, you know, his kids thing during the fall. And all year he has stuff going on. He didn't have that before. But agritourism is a new uh, special use permit we have. We didn't have before. That's a new one that, that we put into place. And I was on land use before. And, and, and so we put that in so we could give that person with an A1, which is an ag, with ag uh, zoning, the ability to do agritourism on their property. And then with that, then we put a list of conditions together as to what they can and cannot do based upon staff giving us input because they don't want to do all the legwork on this. Um, for it. So this particular case is a little different because the, it was existing, so everything is after the fact. He's trying to bring it into compliance so he can uh, not have this court case hanging overhead. So, but I don't know if there were meetings held or not. I'm going to ask Mr. Siegel to come up to the podium for why he's coming to see that question. I just had a quick question. Why he's walking up. Uh, this is for the land use. When I said the process is currently in effect, was I correct? Yes. Okay, so if it's currently in effect, then the way that this guy's going about it is correct. correct. So now we want to change the process in midstream. And that doesn't seem correct to me. <coughs> Mr. Ballish, can um, Janine address that real quick? I'll address uh, County Board Member Ogala's questions first, but yes, we did have a pre-application meeting with Mr. Siegel and uh, both uh, Lawrence Daly Ferry and Annette Parker were present at the meeting, as well as land use staff, and we had County Board staff there as well. And then in response to Mr. Balich's uh, question about the process, so you were correct in uh, you know having this concurrent special use permit for the liquor to go basically on the same agenda for the county board as the request for the increase in the liquor license. Um, so yes, that's the process in play and that's the process that, as Nick was speaking to, perhaps we need to codify and have the board formally vote on, because right now it's just a policy of what we're doing. Who's that the second part of that department? No, so land use, we are only in charge of your agenda. The county board office would be in charge of other aspects and that would appear on the executive committee correct presumably the executive committee for the license uh, thank you for allowing me to speak I wasn't know it was necessary but apparently it is I will concur with staff we did in fact have that meeting it was organized by land use mr. Ebner um, both our county board reps were there the county board Ms. Reagan at that time was was there speaking for the county board uh, along with the two reps from nine which is where uh, this property uh, is. Um, Marie Barnes from the executive's office was there um, because we were, um, I really knew the, the intent was to move forward to get a, a liquor license for uh, this facility and as well as for the, the um, not just for inside the barn but for the the rest of the property um, and so I was directed suggested whatever by land use that I should spend the three over three thousand dollars to apply for a special use after that meeting I didn't apply for it till after that meeting um, realizing that there's not a guarantee that there'd be a liquor license but everybody at the table was uh, uh, the person speaking for the county board as a whole was very much in favor of it or so she said uh, my two county board representatives were very much in favor of it, as they said. Ms. Barnes thought there was a process to follow to go through this. I did have several uh, subsequent conversations with uh, Ms. Barnes, but more importantly with Jim Harvey. I've known Jim for years and years and years. I uh, did speak with him uh, about the process. He said that there was a process. I actually spoke with Mr. Eustace on several occasions about this, knowing that there was a, 
uh, we would have to come to the county board <coughs> to uh, get the number increased. Uh, my understanding is that, that since this um, moratorium or limit was put on, there have in fact been two additional liquor licenses uh, given, uh, one in 2000, or two of them in 2015. Uh, one of them has since gone out of business, so that license has expired, but there's still one of those still in business. So uh, I felt going forward that I had some relative confidence that there was a process in place. I, I talked to all the people that, you know, from land use up to the county board, to the county executive's office, to the liquor commissioner, uh, everybody that, that is a citizen of Will County would think that, okay, you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's, you're doing what everybody's telling you that you're supposed to do. And um, so, so we got to this point. If there was any pushback that, well, you probably aren't going to get through your license. Why would I spend $3,000, over $3,000 to apply for something that I got any indication that it would not be uh, refundable or that it, it wouldn't be successful? Um, as to what we're doing right now, um, the only thing that the court case is for is bringing the interior of the barn up to commercial compliance, which we have done. We had inspections done earlier this month, bringing it up to commercial compliance. Uh, it was not about liquor. It was not about the, the agritainment. The agritainment activity is a right of use. You don't need a special use for it. Um, there was no question that, oh, you, you have to stop doing your, your what you're doing uh, Mr. Trenier said, you know, we've been operating a pumpkin fest for quite some time, and uh, yes, we've been doing that legally. Nobody's ever told us, still have not told us, that we're doing anything uh, inappropriately, illegally, any, anything else. A lot of our operation is in the city of Crest Hill, and it is spilled out into uh, all the property that we own that's, that's the subject of this. Uh, we currently use caterers for uh, weddings on the farm that we're holding with a special use with, that was granted. Um, to us, um, and under that, the, uh, the the only provision we needed to follow was that the caterer needed to have a, a liquor license, was to have a state liquor license, and they were and they were obtained a uh, county liquor license for them. So we, it's not a question of us illegally serving alcohol. We never have illegally served alcohol on the property. Um, we went through the process, and we were granted uh, the right to do that through. Uh, the county liquor license through the caterer who is, has a license in the state. So I, I've been over backwards trying to not break, it, not break any rules. Uh, when they're telling me that I did something appropriately, I'm working diligently to fix that. But uh, this didn't come up because of a liquor license issue or anything like that. And I'm confused when, when in June of 15 and October of 15, there were, there were two new liquor licenses given uh, by the county board. Uh, I don't know whether they need a, a special use or not. Uh, I, I didn't look that deeply into the case. My interest was, I know that I can apply for the special use. That's not something they can take away from me. And the county uh, board did, in fact, issue liquor licenses uh, in those two cases. So I just want to say why, at this point, the, the rug is being pulled out from under me. I've done everything, um, paid a lot of money to, to follow the process. And now we're saying, well, because somebody else didn't, understand something uh, that wasn't explained to me, and now I'm um, losing $3,000 and, uh, and, and getting and getting nothing for it, and uh, I'm just confused as to, if you elected officials are confused, where does that leave the, the poor citizen that has to follow your rules? If you're confused, where does that leave us? And uh, it's just extremely frustrating. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Siegel, I definitely understand your confusion, and I think this was just more of an oversight in the, in, during the process of uh, changeover of staff. And I'm going to make a motion, uh, that, or second motion that Rachel already made, to table S18023 uh, to the next month's meeting. And by then, hopefully, our county board staff will have an item on the agenda to allow for a liquor license to be added. Um, and we can vote on both at the same time and move forward, because that does seem to be our process. Yeah, I, I did speak with Ms. Dunn uh, last week about the process, which 
Uh, she's here today. She can verify that we had. She was very kind to give us as uh, much time as we needed to talk about this process. Um, she admitted that she doesn't know where the process is. But when I spoke with her predecessor, uh, who was in place for a year and a half, two years, whatever, uh, who presumably she's a lawyer and as well as representative, you know, for the county board, she didn't seem to think that there was any confusion as to what the process was. And I was depending on land use, and they've done a, a good job of telling me what the process is, what the steps are, follow those steps, put meetings together, have discussions, talk to people. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I've done that. So if in the rears you have confusion, again, I don't know why my three thousand dollar oh fee. i would not suggest that you need to pay the fee again I, uh, our tabling this for a month would not require you to pay the fee again not at all we just to mr moustis's point probably ought to have and that is our process both items on the agenda at the same time and the only way we can do that is to table the liquor license variance or the liquor variance request to next Especially month years. Especially you, so that we can get the licensing part on the agenda also. Unless I'm missing the point here. Uh, so I have three things. The first is, um, you know, we apologize that we that do not have it correctly on there. Yeah. But yeah. to your point about the 2015 versus now, I do not want to set any precedent of doing it wrong. Right. So you know, what they did to that I wasn't well in May, but I was not on that board. So I'm on this board, and so I, I truly apologize that we dropped the ball. That's not factual fault. I just want you to know what you stated is not factual. And then I had a question about the three thousand. Is that all just for the liquor, or was that special use in also for this other special use? Liquor. It was all just the liquor. And Jackie's correct that that doesn't need to be repaid. No, no, not repaid at all. Would I, would I be able to get a refund of that and just stop the liquor process? Because I can do, continue to do weddings through, through the caterer. And I was told that that uh, this was the, the next process to take. And normally it's not a refund. We're not going to approve it. We're saying that we want to make sure that we're doing the process correctly when we consider that aspect of it. And since that other line item, which is to increase the liquor license available, is not on here. To Mr. Mises's point, is if we approve it as written, then yeah, they could come back and say no, we're not approving the license, and that could be denied at that point. So and instead of opening us up, up for litigation, then on both ends, yeah, it's to move it forward together. So that's why we're tabling that, not necessarily to say no, but to do the process correctly. And and so at that point, you know, if it, we can find out. Should we increase the legislature license number at that point? But we can't address that as the way the ordinance is written currently. So, so but I, my understanding was that uh, in addition to the process that I'm following here, that you're following here today, when it goes to the county board, they would need to have a, a separate uh, hearing for uh, your process to extend the uh, you know, liquor license, which really is separate from the special use matter. The special use matter is, is, is saying that, that, that uh, it, the special use is, uh, can, go, can go forward. Um, and uh, obviously, I, I would never apply for it if everybody I talked to, to the person, including Mr. Eustace, that this is a process that could move forward, that there was a process to move it forward. Uh, I was not told that there is the only question was, did not put it on our agenda correctly. I have a quick question for you. As I've been watching this case, I have not seen any uh, adjacent residents come out and speak out against this, correct. correct? Correct. So I think the idea to table it is to simply clarify the process in the spirit of transparency. And I don't believe that us tabling it is changing the likelihood of you getting a liquor license. I think it's more for us to be administratively transparent versus us saying that we are not interested in it. As we have not seen anybody come out against it, the likelihood is pretty good that you would be able to get it. Let us just tighten up the process. Yeah, I do hold a liquor license, or our business does hold a liquor license in the city of Crest Hill, in, in the area that is in the city of Crest Hill. Uh, we, we got that last year. Uh, the 
city's not had any objection. Uh, and to Mr. Vistas's point, uh, there are no other liquor licenses that I'm aware of uh, for the for the in the county anywhere anywhere near me within you know miles of me. There are no liquor licenses. So the the idea that we don't want to have too many you know of them proliferation uh, for this type of uh, a license. Obviously, that, that isn't the case. If their concern is not having too many up and down the road, which was the discussion that Mr. Mustis and I had, is that, okay, you're on a farm, and there's no other liquor licenses around you other than the one that I hold for our business. Um, so we're meeting that criteria or that desire to, to not, not restrict it because we don't want to start having them up and down the road. We don't have that, and, and we wouldn't have that with, with my approval. I just want to make it clear that we're not tabling. We were not talking about tabling it to deny you. That's, I feel like that's not it at all. It's really us making up our process, and I want to make that clear to you. Okay, thank you. It's Jim and Steve. Okay. Yeah, if, I, if I might, I, you know, in, in, in this particular case, I think there is a number of issues. First, let me say, this county has never added additional liquor licenses. When you made that statement, Paul, it's, it's, it's not an accurate statement. Just so you know, if there was licenses issued in 15, it meant there was licenses available at the time. And the county starts to eliminate them. So the county has never added a liquor license. Just so you know. And this committee knows. Uh, uh, do we have, excuse me, Jim, do we know what date, it seemed like it was arbitrary, nobody knew when it was, when in fact did you put the, the date? The dates are when we change the order. Right. Well, what are the dates? When you see the, when you see the county uh, uh, and state attorney can jump in here. When you see the county take action on the license and amend the liquor ordinance to eliminate licenses, that's when it starts. That's when it started. We've eliminated them, but we've added enough. No, no. I mean, it's not like there, 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 is a, there is a resolution that says we're going to eliminate liquor licenses. It's, it's an amendment to the liquor ordinance to eliminate license, a license that's available. When, when was that amendment? Do we know that amendment? I don't know. Was the first one was about a year and a half ago, Mary, two years? I don't, I don't know. We capped the number of licenses. We capped the number of licenses. And when was that? When did you cap the number of licenses? 16. 16. I'll tell you, if it was done in 15, that's because there was license available. Okay. And I just said, we haven't added any. We said we've done this in the past. We have well, not. well, they grant licenses were granted in 15. That's and, because and, there were licenses available. Okay. Okay. I, I, I accept that. I, my, my presumption was that that was much longer than a year or two no, ago that the, the, the moratorium was put on. Uh, that I know that you're instrumental in, in, in doing that. And so I thought that that was afterwards. But let me say this. Here's what I really want to get to. This isn't necessarily, for example, your, your uh, uh, agritourism. Agritourism is not addressed in the liquor ordinance. You know, maybe there's a, you know, me personally, I would say we, need, we would amend the liquor ordinance to address agritourism in relation to liquor. So maybe there's a, a uh, different, a, a new classification of a liquor license, you know, and I think part of what we have to do in the liquor ordinance is, is kind, kind of uh, 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 define or maybe re refine, I should say, some of the classifications that we have within the ordinance, you know, to say, you know, whatever, you know, uh, I, I mean, you know, that, that, that one classification takes care of all 20 different types of businesses. Maybe we need to take a bit different look at that and, and, and look at uh, maybe some different classifications. I think there should be one for agritourism, separate, for a number of reasons. And, and that could be because you're making, you could be making cider on, on site or something. Uh, I realize that's another kind of thing we do. But I'm, uh, permit that we, we allow, but, but my point is is that uh, uh, we should look at that. And Paul, I think you make my case 
your expectation is, is that you would not go through this process if you weren't given the impression, or you have the impression, that you will definitely get this license. Even when we've talked, I've told you, there's no guarantee you'll get a license. You know I've told you that. Right, but you also said you would support it, so. I, I also said, for your type of business, I would probably be supportive. And I would. You know, it's a different kind of thing. If you tell me you were, you were going to put up a regular old bar, I would like to tell you, no, I'm not going to be supportive of that. You know, and that's why I'm talking about classification. <coughs> you know, maybe we should take a look at that. Yeah. But anyways, my point is, is that it needs to go back. We need, the board, needs to look at the liquor ordinance and maybe make a number of different changes. My, my concern is that this is a zoning case, and we're pretty much getting into the liquor license process. But that's so, the, you know, can uh, you make the point? This is my point. You, you say, oh, this is a zoning process. It has nothing to do with the, with the uh, uh, liquor permit. Well, then, sure it does. If there's not one available, there's not one person that's going to go through the expense and the time if they don't think they're going to get that license, or whether they don't think they can sue to get it. I, I, I mean, I think the license has to come before the special use. How's that? I, I agree with that. I agree with that, but our current process is not what we have in place. Well, you know what? So, you, 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 um, everybody can say that there's a there's never been a formalized process. I'm telling you, there just hasn't been. I would tell you, we started the process, and I would like to uh, follow up on that and have that presented, at least to the I agree committee. with that, too. I mean, uh, that's, I think we're all in agreement with that. And also, is Jim Harvey the liquor commissioner, or he's the guy who's most knowledgeable about the process? He's the officer. So we definitely need to have more insight on the process of the liquor application process, if that's the rest of it. Did he apply yet? Did he apply for what? That's my question. Did you I don't actually apply? So. We, we were told that they were, they were uh, separate processes. I've had discussions with them, and to Jim's point, yes, we did talk about the fact that we really need a, a hybrid type of permit because uh, we're, we're not packaged liquor. Uh, we do have sit-down food and drink. Uh, but we also want to be able to, uh, like a golf course, uh, consume alcohol outside of a, of a building. Uh, that's the kind of license that I have in the city of Crest Hill. It's an AG license that allows me, like a golf course, to have food outside. And they don't have that right now. And we, we look through the whole book to see the types of licenses were available. And I said, well, you know, you really don't fit here, you really don't fit there, you kind of got to put these two together. And uh, which, which Jim pointed out to me that you know, where there's a golf course license in Green Garden, and where CDME has a, a license, CDME is very similar to what we are, and uh, so it appeared as though that th there there was a way to make this work, and uh, nobody ever said, well, but, but don't try. I guess I wasn't planning on being the guinea pig. Uh, your rule events came about after they said that I didn't fit into another category that you already approved that was a right of use, and so I had to wait for the process for months because their world events didn't even wasn't even voted on until August, and I started this process back in May, and uh, so um, I, I, I'm fine as long as a relative certainly that it's going to move forward. But I just feel very frustrated that I'm the guinea pig that is being held up here from being able to do my business. Um, so I wanted also to Jim's point and to your point and to Amanda's point is I I'm the representative for nine this meeting call. And I do support your liquor license. Um, and I support changing or adding additions. So I'm happy to sit down with Jim Harvey and talk to him what that entails. I'm happy to work with Ken and Speaker Denise to get it on the executive committee so that we can vote on this properly next month. Um, that's my intent. Uh, and I apologize again, you were the guinea pig, and that this is some, that we dropped the ball in, in this case. Um, we, I mean, hopefully we can move forward. But there is a motion to split. Ken, and a second. I second. I was going to talk. Okay. Judy, let me get Judy first. I just had a question for Mr. Siegel. You mentioned that you have 
So that way, the court could go forward and things like that. So you don't have to table it if you don't want to. But you guys will never decide if there's a liquor license. You guys only decide a special use permit to use liquor. Yeah, uh, I think that the correct way to move forward on this is to uh, vote on the variance now. And if it passes, fine. If it doesn't pass, he loses his money and he's out. But then he would have a lawsuit against us if, if we went and tabled it because we're going contrary to our existing policy. Our existing policy is to get the variance first and then if we don't get the liquor license, it's too bad for him. Can. So when we say we want to table it, I don't have a problem tabling it for a month. You know, that way the new, so we can actually have a better discussion of it. But in the process of tabling it for a month, it's not going to change. Are we going to use the policy that's in place now? Or are we going to wait and then change the policy while this guy's in the middle? We're not changing anything. Well, I mean, well, the way that Jackie said it, was a little bit different. She said that we could vote on both things at once. And that is, the, the current policy says you, you vote for the variance, and if you get the variance, then you go for the liquor license. I didn't you mean be, simultaneously in the oh, same sentence. I meant at the same sure county sure. board meeting. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just taking her, I take things literally. They yes, ma'am. Um, but, but that's what, so I'll, I'm in favor of tabling until next month, but if we uh, decide not to, uh, I'll move forward on it. And we want to change the policy first, if that's the case, then he should be able to get his money back. David, then my, my thank you. I'll just be really brief. I know before the committee makes a decision to pass forward, I, I just felt the need to, to speak up for the department. The department has been, done nothing but try to facilitate this process for Mr. Siegel. Now, I know it's been categorized as, you know, getting things in a process. He, he is not the victim of the process here. Um, you know, these things were done without a permit. He's put the cart before the horse. So, and we've done our best to try to work through this process for the past several months. And I know Brian and Janine and Owen in our office have spent countless hours explaining the process, dealing with building permit issues, zoning issues, and getting things squared away to make this right. So I just felt the need to express that um, in the comments I've been hearing. Um, so it, it's trying to make the best of the situation. They've done an exceptional job. I agree. Why? Yeah, and I, I, I'd like to jump on that too. I agree, they did everything they were supposed to do. Yeah. Paul did. You, you asked for permits before you build the building. You don't build the building and then say, I want liquor, oh, I need some permits. So that, that's a whole other part of this. But as far as the liquor scenario, we, need a, we do need a new policy. We should create a policy that says something where you go for the liquor license first and concurrently we, we do the special use and they do their due diligence and make it a one-step process. Because that way if the license doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But we did create a situation where we kind of put our cart court horse because we asked them to go through uh, our processing, that's the way we kind of changed the ordinance last time that we had a vote on a new license if needed. And it does create a little bit of a scenario, although we said, if you don't get it, you don't get it. it depends what the board feels like. But we, sh we should make it not easier to get the license, but easier to make both steps move forward at the same time. If, if I and really, until, until the SA's office is good with everything that's going on, I, I mean, I still don't see how you can go and grant things. Because Paul, when you're talking, Dan's, Dan's shaking his head that that's not the case. So we don't really know what the issue down to the wire is as far as what the SA's office is dealing with. I mean, Paul, you can say that's what it is, but he's, he's shaking his head. So and there's confusion on that part of it as well. So I, I suggest that you do table it, and we just go next month and, and make a more finite policy on how we move forward. If I, if I could just weigh in for one second here. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Maura Dunn. I'm the new chief of staff for the county board. Um, I, ha I did have the pleasure to meet Mr. Siegel uh, and his wife and his daughter the other day. Um, I also met with land use uh, yesterday for quite some time um, with the county board members who um, are, are the lead in, in that committee. 
Um, it seems to me, Mr. Siegel, and you would agree that this was, under your understanding, was a parallel process. Is that fair to say? With the county zoning and the liquor license sort of moving at the same time together. Yes. Okay. And but, however, just I just want to make clear that um, no application for the liquor license has been applied for through the county. Correct. Correct. I, okay. I was, I was told they didn't know how to do that. Sure, sure. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm, so, but just, just so the board is clear that, um, you know, the zoning variance that you're voting on today, obviously we've figured out is completely separate. Yes. Um, and I think Mr. Siegel went into this process today knowing, again, to echo what um, Mr. Prislone and um, Mr. Moose has said that there's a, there is a possibility that the liquor license will not, there will not be an exemption or, or something of that nature, but that's a conversation that the board needs to have, um, uh, uh, you know, pr obviously prior to the next meeting. Um, and that's all I have to say about it. So under, under this board, do we have to vote for each uh, special use? We have to first split it up. So there, there is a motion and a second to split it out, and then we can vote on them separately. Because as written now, it's one ordinance. It's two separate ordinances. Yeah. No, the voting would be, um, Rachel, the voting would be on the variance uh, for, for the zoning on the liquor. It, it's two variances, correct? Two special, variances. Use special, use. Special, use. special use permits, I apologize. I'm new. Variances are not before this board. So, so then. Well, they've already been approved. That doesn't come to you. The, the zoning variances were approved through the, P, the PCC, the Planning and Zoning Commission. That happened uh, last week. Those were approved. Don't we also have to approve them? No. The no. is written as one ordinance. Mary, can you comment on this? I'm sorry. The, the, my, the agenda before me yep. groups together the zoning case of ZC 18059 and which is then requesting S18022 and special permit for rural events, S18023 special permit for ancillary liquor services. So my motion was to split out the 23, the S-18-23 to be tabled for next month and so we can vote on the rest of this ordinance as written. So, so what, what is my understanding, the motion on the table is to start on the floor is to table the one special use request. Yes. The other special, there's no separating them out. They are yeah. two separate issues. They are voted on separately right. all of the time. The variance was already approved, so that does not come to you at all. Right. So there are two special uses? Yes. Two special uses. <coughs> the motion on the floor is to table the one relative to the use of liquor on the property. Correct. So, and I've been told too, just for the information, Mr. Siegel was given the application for a liquor license at the pre-meeting when he met with Lane. Did he so submit he's it? well aware of that, he has not submitted it. Thank you. So that's why it's not moving forward. So I'd like to entertain a motion for 022, which is the Royal Events. Motion. Second. Move. Public second. All in favor? Aye. I thought you already had a motion and a second on the table. Did we yeah, have a 2 3 to be tabled on that? Yes. Did, we did not vote on that. Okay. No. Motion again. Oh, I motion for S18 203 to be tabled for next month. And I so that we can add in the process of including the liquor license. To the agenda. So it's been moved. Second. Probably said that 023 assembly liquor will be tabled until the next meeting. Yes. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now, I'm going to entertain motion for 022 warrior events. Motion. Second. It has been moved, probably second, to move this on to the county board. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you.